set it up here. So Joe Kennedy the third is challenging Ed Markey in the Senate. Kennedy is this very uh, establishment corporate Democrat, raises a ton of money from corporations, is pretending in this race that he is the progressive one, that he is this new voice because he's a young guy. But <laughs> you're a Kennedy, and uh, you have he, he's shown no fight at all for the issues that he now pretends to care about, like Medicare for All or a Green New Deal. Um, but Kennedy here, getting endorsed by Nancy Pelosi. Let me show you uh, her endorsement that he shared on Twitter. Never before have the times demanded we elect courageous leaders as today. And that is why I'm proud to endorse Joe Kennedy for Senate. In 2018, when we took back the House, Joe campaigned across America to make that victory possible. He knows that to achieve progressive change, you must be on the front lines leading movements of people. Massachusetts and America need Joe Kennedy's courage and leadership in the Senate to fight for the change we need. Thank you. So there's the endorsement. Now, the translation of that is, well, Joe Kennedy raises a lot of corporate money for the Democratic Party. So I back Kennedy over Markey. And also, on top of that, Ed Markey is someone that is fighting for a Green New Deal fighting for Medicare for all, is on the more Bernie Sanders AOC side of things, and Nancy Pelosi is also threatened by that. So those two things put together, you have this endorsement from the Speaker of the House for Joe Kennedy, who, again, is pretending that he is the progressive one here, <laughs> yet getting the Pelosi endorsement. Now, before I get to uh, the incredible news that came out of this, AOC tweeted in response to this endorsement. So here the Boston Globe had tweeted out, Nancy Pelosi is endorsing Joe Kennedy in his Senate challenge to Ed Markey. AOC here openly challenging her uh, leader here in the House. No one gets to complain about primary challenges again. So DCCC, when can we expect you to reverse your blacklist policy against prime, uh, primary organizations? Because between this and lack of care around Ilhan Omar's challenger, it seems like a less policy and more cherry picking activity. So to get to the Ilhan Omar aspect of this as well, she follows up by saying Ilhan's multi-million challenge was bankrolled by DC lobbyists and dark money groups. He blatantly admitted to using shell corporations to get around the DCCC blacklist, which all but means his vendors worked with the Democratic Party. Yet DCCC has an enforced policy. I wonder why. So AOC here pointing out the obvious, the DCCC doesn't actually care about the uh, initial promise that they had made here. This was from uh, last year. DCCC promises to blacklist firms that work with candidates challenging incumbents. So the point of this was to work against groups like the Justice Democrats, who had been challenging Democratic incumbents and continue to. You saw with Jamal Bowman taking out Elliot Engel. You saw with uh, Cory Bush taking out Lacey Clay. So... The point of the DCCC doing this was to stop the ability for groups like that to be successful. Well, when it comes to primarying people like Ilhan Omar or Ed Markey, all of a sudden they don't care. Doesn't matter at all because, of course, it has nothing to do with the challenge. It has everything to do with the policies. It has everything to do with which, which candidate is taking the corporate money and which isn't. DCCC will always back the corporate candidates every single time. So, ultimately, though, your money update. The Kennedy campaign said it raised more than $100,000 in response to Pelosi's endorsement. T. Markey raised more than $300,000 via 9,000 individual contributions since Pelosi endorsed Joe Kennedy. To be clear, we outraised him by triple. And this money, by the way, this Kennedy money, it's not individual contributions. It's, once again, largely big donor money. Large donations here for Kennedy after the Pelosi endorsement. Markey, though, getting money from the people because that's who he represents in this race and why you should support Ed Markey in the race for Senate on September 1st. So this happened again. Whether it's Jamal Bowman, whether it's Ed Markey, they got nothing. <laughs> in fact, at this point, I'm looking forward to the endorsements for, for candidates like Kennedy or, or Elliot Engel. 
Because when you have a, a Nancy Pelosi or a Hillary Clinton come out to back these uh, corporate candidates, all it does is help the progressive challenger. So please, keep it going. <laughs> keep, keep, keep rolling out those endorsements. Uh, and this should also excite you. This should excite you for the future. Understand that, you know, when Biden gets in, that isn't the end. That like, the People need to understand the focus. You, you cannot just have a, 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 uh, a singular focus on the presidency. Understand where your power, where you can use your power. So be it in local races, in state races, in movements, in protest movements, in Black Lives Matter, in, um, uh, you know, various challenges like this. There are... There are ways in, in unionizing your workplace. There are ways you can use your power that is separate from the presidency. And this stuff will continue. People f right now are fully aware of what Joe Biden and this, and this administration coming up is about. And you'll only be able to grow that left wing movement under a Biden presidency because they will not do what is necessary to control the impact of this pandemic when it comes to the financial help that people need, the health care people need. They're not going to bring out two grand a month UBI. They're not going to bring out Medicare for all. So all it does is make the case for the left, for more challenges like Jamal Bowman, for more people like Cori Bush. So I'm excited for the future because you already have this awareness when it comes to these sorts of candidates. And on top of that, it's going to continue to grow when more and more people realize that when a Democratic Party is in charge, not much is actually going to change unless you challenge them and push them and bring more candidates like uh, whether it's keeping Ed Markey in the Senate or whether it's Jamal Bowman. Keep supporting candidates like that. That's the only way you're really going to have change from within the Democratic Party. Kennedy is running against Ed Markey for a U.S. Senate seat in Massachusetts. Now, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I do believe that these Kennedys are made in a lab somewhere. Um Kennedy's the grandson of RFK and the grand nephew of former president JFK. Kennedy name is like, you know, American royalty. I mean, it's like a Bush or a Clinton in that they're political dynasties. So, um, the question is, what's he running on? The answer is absolutely nothing. He's like, he's like the perfect example of a corporate Democrat who really has nothing specific they're fighting for and nothing poignant to say. And so he ends up releasing stuff like this. My family's come up an awful lot in this campaign. I want to take a moment to tell you what they taught me. Taught me that leadership isn't about power. It's about humanity. It's about the messy stuff, the hope, and the hurt, the common currency we share in a world that gives and takes far too much, far too often. You wanna know my, about my family? Ask me about them. Because their legacy is my lesson. The sad thing is, you and I know damn well he practiced that in front of the mirror repeatedly, and he still managed to mess it up, and he still managed to sound insufferable. Guys, it's no longer 1992. Listen, you can't, if you're a corporate Democrat, you got to update your operating system because this is like you're running a campaign from 1992. That's what that is. And it's the clearest thing I've ever seen. Like the era of the platitude and the cliche is over. It is over. They keep running as if like the Trump campaign never happened. I've tried to teach you guys about what, what I call the weasel words because... They never say anything substantive, but e when they try to maybe barely dip their toe in that water, you'll hear the weasel word. So they'll say stuff like, what we need is more affordable access to health care. You should, sirens going off in your head if you hear that. It's red flags all over the place. Why? Because if they're saying affordable and access to health care... What that means is not free, universal, as in paid for by tax dollars. So not single payer, not universal health care, not catching up to the rest of the developed world. That means like ever so slightly expand Obamacare. But affordable means you're still going to have to pay and it's going to come out of pocket. 
So you could still theoretically go bankrupt and improve access. Everybody already has access to healthcare. Access is not the freaking problem. It's that not everybody's covered and a lot of people have medical bankruptcies. So this is why we're so insistent. Like they need to say Medicare for all or single payer. Like you need to say that. Any other, anything else is just trying to put lipstick on a pig. And you'll hear it a lot from people like Joe Kennedy and every other corporate Democrat. You're going to hear it. You're going to hear these weasel words. You're going to hear like 80% of what he say is stuff like this, is stuff like this. 80% of what he says. Um, it's going to be bland. It almost sounds like, you know, corporate training speak. It's going to be that, and then the 20% of the time he does bring a policy, you'll hear a thousand weasel words, which will let you know, oh, he's not actually for the things that I'm in favor of. So, I'm trying to equip you guys with the tools to understand when a politician is BSing you, and to demand better. Get them on the record for the specific policies. Congressman Kennedy had a chance to sign on to Medicare for All when it was introduced. I stood with Bernie Sanders to fight for health care for everyone. Medicare for all. It took Congressman Kennedy two years to sign on to Medicare for all. That's not progressive leadership. Congressman Kennedy decided he was going to work for a right-wing Republican district attorney. That's not progressive leadership. Congressman Kennedy decided that he was going to vote to send military weapons to the local police in our country. That's not progressive leadership. Congressman Kennedy had a chance when he gave the State of the Union response to Donald Trump to talk about climate change. Congressman Kennedy did not mention the word climate change in his response. Congressman Kennedy is a progressive in name only. When he gets a chance to lead on Medicare for all, on climate change, on the militarization of the streets of this country, he was not a progressive leader and when he had to make a decision as to who he was going to work for as a lawyer he decided to work as a lawyer for a right-wing Republican that is not the kind of progressive leadership which our country needs desperately right now